Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And welcome to the first video of my 2024 Valentine card series. Now, Valentine's. I have a caveat with that. I do the Valentine card series, but a lot of the cards I include in the series are not specifically Valentine cards. Um, because you only need so many Valentine cards, you know? I like using, though, the Valentine releases that come out because a lot of brands release Valentine love themed products. And I like to make them a lot more open ended, you know, to send to friends, family, etc. Kind of more all occasion. And yeah, I'm not sure as of filming this intro how many years I've been doing the Valentine series, <laughs> but I'll have a link to all the previous ones in the blog post that'll be linked below. So starting the Valentine series, I will still have Christmas cards coming up for during my Christmas series because I don't end that till pretty much Christmas day, if not a tiny bit later. So I'll be jumping around, nothing scheduled. I'm all over the place. Welcome to the crafty chaos. It is what it is. So yeah, that's most housekeeping. This one is also for the Waffle Flower uh, December release. Lots of amazing products. I, of course, went with the new postage stencils because there's more and it makes me happy. These are the postal, postage collage rose stencil set. So I use that with the original uh, postal collage wafer die that I've used in other videos. I will link to those this way at the end of the video in the end screen and yeah tons of new products that came out I'll have a link to the release etc and yeah check out my blog post for all the info all the things and then just keep watching this video and I'll show you guys how I made these cards so before I even started filming I just die cut some Simon Says Stamp ivory cardstock and I used the postage collage wafer die and then I've got my big waffle flower grip mats you do not need two of them but I've talked about this in previous videos you can see the one on the left is nice and stained because I use it always all the time so I got I bought a second one just for things like this it's just a convenience thing so that way I don't have to move things around <laughs> so yeah it works for me so I've got my grip mats to hold the uh, cardstock in place and then to hold the stencils in place. And I'm using the postage collage rose stencil set. And for this first layer, I am going to start blending on three different shades of pink ink. You could keep this simple and do just like one shade, especially if like you're in a hurry, you don't got a lot of time. You can just stencil like all pink or whatever your you know color is because this will look pretty and purple yellow like whatever color you want and then do the greenery which is the second stencil and then the little starburst which i'll get to in a couple of minutes but you could just do like one color for each and be done with it you know but i was having fun so i'm using uh simon says stamps positively saturated inks for this and i went with the aptly named uh, carnation peony and rose inks carnation being the lightest and then I went in with peony which is the middle color and you know did a bit of blending and then for the rose color which was the darkest I'm using the waffle flower um, shader one plus brushes I've shown these in a bunch of videos as well I am liking those brushes a lot I have the original ones and then I've got the, the newer version, which are just like softer and denser. So they apply more color quickly. So again, it just kind of depends on what I'm sort of creating. But I was using it more to just, yeah, add those little darker areas here and there. And then after the first stencil, the second stencil is all the greenery. And like I said, you could just do like one shade, but I got all the colors of all the things. Why, why not? <laughs> So for this one, I used uh, Positively Saturated Ink Trio, starting with Celery, which is my lightest. And then I go in with Limelicious and Perfection. And for both of those, I was using one of the Shader One Plus brushes just to keep the like deeper colors kind of concentrated towards, you know, the, the stems of the greenery, the base of the leaves, etc. And then there's this 
uh, wording, which you could skip depending, again, on what you're creating. That was the other thing I was kind of liking with the stencil set. I was like, it's just roses. Like I could, this could be any occasion, really. Like I could make birthday cards, thank you cards, thinking of you, you know, leave off that with love sentiment, use your own sentiments, sky's the limit, you know, but I decided to add it because I just I kind of liked how it looked. So with that one, I went over it with uh, charcoal, positively saturated ink and another one of the just little shader one plus brushes. That's why I'm really liking these, um, you know, smaller waffle flower brushes is not just things like this, but other stencils that have, you know, areas closer together, etc. And I want different colors. I was like, rather than messing around with a bunch of masking, which I've done in the past, I can just use the smaller brushes. And I was like, love it. <laughs> so the third stencil, I was going to use it. And then I set it aside because I wanted to do this step first. I'll come back to that stencil in a minute. So I'm using the um, postage collage love stamp set because Waffle Flowers released a couple previous ones and they're you know they have little denominations and cancellation marks etc cetera, etc cetera, to like zhuzh up these little um die cuts and stencil areas etc to actually make them look like postage stamps and then you can also make it look like they've you know gone through and been canceled and all that stuff so I just stamp them randomly onto all of these um backgrounds with VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink and I just put them on acrylic blocks and then just started stamping them all over the place. So I did the stamping first because my final stencil I wanted to use paste with and I didn't want to try to stamp over the paste. That would have just been annoying. So I did the stamping first then I applied the last stencil and this one creates kind of almost little like starburst effects. So I thought that would look really pretty with some um, embossing paste. So I'm using some Picket Fence Studios Paper Glaze in Golden Rose. Kind of aptly named for this. And then just applied it with a little palette knife right over these um, backgrounds. So it'll give it a little bit of texture and of course the shine that I live. And then applied it over the second one. Same thing. Got it centered applied the paste and then I went and washed this and my other stencils but like just wash this off with um just soap and water same with my palette knife so washed all of the things set the backgrounds aside to dry wiped off my grip mats everything was good to go so after everything was dry I decided also to add splatter because you know why not so I put these into my splat box and I'm going to use um black soot distress paint for my splatter. So shook it up really well, applied a little bit to my palette, and then I'm just using my little fan brush and I'm just going to splatter these backgrounds somewhat lightly. Like I still add a fair bit of splatter, but I'm not adding like big blobs. This is just going to add just the little extra texture that I love. You could skip this or you could also use like, you know, the Gonzai Tombi Starry Colors that I love to use, you know, to add some gold splatter. But I thought since I had the, the gold paste with that last stencil that I would just do a little bit of black splatter and it would just finish it off. So after I did that, set those aside to dry again. And then for my sentiments, I just have pieces of black cardstock. And I'm going to use the Elegant Love Clear Stamps, which is actually just one stamp. So first off got my misty i'd use my anti-static powder on the black cardstock and then this stamp it's multiple sentiments but it's one stamp i'm loving that more and more companies are doing this where it's everything's just in one so you just stamp it once and then the wafer die is also just one wafer die and then it just die cuts them all so it's like huh, i've got now a bunch of extra sentiments because i'm only going to use um one of them one on the outside and then one on the inside. So I'm using a couple from here and all the extra ones I'm just going to put in back in the packaging with the stamps. Next time I pull this out, it's like, ooh, I've already got a bunch of heat embossed, die cut sentiments. Life is good. So I inked up the stamps with clear embossing ink, stamped them onto that cardstock, and then coated it with Simon's Detail Gold embossing powder. Repeated the process on the second piece. Same thing, poured on the embossing powder, tapped off the excess, and then I'm going to melt these with my heat tool and like a broken record, which I've, you know, set off and on for years. This will never get old for me. You know, 20 plus years making cards and melting heat, melting embossing powder. There, it's, it's like magic, especially metallic embossing powders. You know, it gets all shiny and metallic and fabulous. And it's like, like, look at that. It's, oh, I love it. <laughs> 
So melted both of these with my heat tool till, like I said, they're shiny and melted. There's no dull, gritty areas. If there are, hit those with the heat tool to make sure they're all melted and they're good to go. Let those cool off for just a little bit. And then I just use my microfiber cloth to wipe off that excess anti-static powder. So wipe all that off. And then the coordinating wafer dye, like I said, is just one wafer dye, which love, you know, line it up. I tape it into place with some washi tape so that it doesn't shift when I run it through my die cut machine. And then one pass through the machine and all of these sentiments are die cut. Love it. Absolutely love it. So got those taped into place die cut them, repeated it on the second piece, and then I've just got like a stack of sentiments here. So I got them all popped out of their um, wafer die, and then I also die cut some scraps of cardstock using um, a couple of the dies from the flower gift box die set. I liked these little, there's these little roses and a little greenery, and I was like, ooh, I'll tuck those in you know, around the sentiment on the front of these cards. So I die cut them from scraps of green cardstock. And then I just use the little shader one brushes. And for the greenery, I use that darkest shade of green ink. So the perfection ink, and just kind of added that towards like the stems and the, the base of the leaves. Just, it just gives it that little, that little extra something. It'll dry back a bit. It'll soften. So it won't be very obvious, but it just, it just gives it that little extra something. So, and then same with the flowers. I had die cut the tops from some dull pink cardstock and then I used that rose ink and the shader one plus brush to just add that to sort of the base of all of these little flower die cuts. And then I also wanted to add a bit of twine. This is, I think this is waffle flowers, like gold um, embroidery that I don't have a link for this. I think it might only be available on the waffle flower site, I'm pretty sure, but I wanted to add just another little hint of gold. So I just threaded this through uh, one of the holes and then tied it into place. Working with metallic, whether it be a metallic thread or a metallic embroidery thread like this can get a little bit finicky. Um, because of the like metallic nature, it's very slippery. Like more so than your basic embroidery twine, et cetera. Like with this, you you need the reverse tweezers. I've shown this in a ton of videos. The reverse tweezers just help when tying bows with, you know, twine, ribbon, et cetera. But with this, it's especially needed because it is like metallic um, threads and that just, they just do, they resist. <laughs> they resist knots and bows and all the things. So actually after I was done and it took a little bit just fiddling to get these in place and they, it does it just wants to fall apart because it just slides so what I did after I, I um, tied the little bows into place I actually just took my craft tacky glue and I have it in just a precision bottle with a little with the precision tip I'll have a link to it with all the other supplies and I actually just squeezed a bit right around the knot of this bow it'll dry clear you won't be able to see it in the end I actually cover it with a sentiment too so it doesn't matter but that helps like once the glue dries that'll keep the bow from just coming undone because again with metallics it's just a given it's gonna happen so i did that set it aside to dry and then adhered the little um flower heads to their stems again just using that craft tacky glue so got those all assembled and then i'm just going to adhere those kind of tuck i'm going to just tuck them under that little bow just to create a little just a little cluster. So I'm going to adhere those into place with the craft tacky glue. And then I had already decided to adhere one of the um, heat emboss sentiments. And originally I was going to uh, like adhere it above the bow, but changed my mind and decided to adhere it like right on top because just because. <laughs> so I used just some little thin foam squares on the sentiment to just kind of pop it up because I'm adhering it on top of like the knot of the bow and then those little die cuts. So pop that into place and then covered that bow mostly. It just kind of peeks out around the sentiment. And then for my card base, I pulled out some pattern paper from my stash. You know, my, my very much hoarded pattern paper. Um, this is just some gingham pattern paper. And I cut that down to just slightly smaller. My card bases are going to be A2 size. So four and a quarter by five and a half. So this I cut down to like four and an eighth by five and three eighths, something like that. And then as is tradition with me lately, I use my little Tim Holtz uh, paper distressor tool just to rough up the edges just a bit, just to give it that little extra texture that I just, I've been obsessed with lately. So roughed up those edges, 
And then my card bases are also dull pink cardstock. And like I said, they're A2 size, so five and a half by four and a quarter. So I adhered the pattern paper that I cut down and roughed up to the card front. And then I adhered my um, like postage collage piece um, to that as well with the craft tacky glue. And then I trimmed down some more of that same ivory cardstock to also just slightly smaller, like four inches by five and a quarter. Um, Trim that down, adhered the remaining little die cut rows and another one of the sentiments. So this is going to go on the inside of the cards. So got those adhered into place and then I'll adhere these to the insides of the cards. As always, a person could technically be done here, but I decided to use my white gel pen and add just little highlights to the stencils images just to give it that little extra something. Again, you could totally skip this. It just... It just gives it that little something, something. I was going to, I thought about adding, you know, bling. I could totally do that too. But I was like, mm, I've got, you know, splatter and st the stencil paste and then the gold thread and the die cuts. Like I, I got a lot going on, but it was fun. So I just took my white gel pen. This is the Jelly Roll 10 gel pen. Same one I use all the time. And added little highlights to the stenciled images and then also decided to add little highlights to the die cuts as well. Just to kind of tie it all together. Makes them pop a little bit more. Once those are added, these cards are complete. So, like I mentioned in the intro, this is part of the Waffle Flower December release. So I will have links to the release. And then of course I'll have my supply list with links in the description box below the video. So you can just expand that if you're interested. I'll have the photos, all the things as well in the blog post that will be linked directly below. So you can just check that out if you guys would like. And then yeah, I'll have links to the other videos I've done using that postage collage uh, die set and the other sets that Waffle Flower has released in the past. So you can check those out at the end screen if you're interested. Thank you all so very much for watching, for thumbs upping, commenting, subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you. And I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.